I never expected to actually make a living at doing this. This is art, substantial public art that makes a statement, that is in tune with the community. It nudges, encourages, and compels the viewer to look at what they think they know differently. With images like that, Evan Cordova, I was trying to get a sense of um, a hyper-reality and kind of an unreality of that hyper-reality. It's not a documentary image. I mean, there's too much shadow detail. Things are in too much focus. It's too precisely choreographed. It's just not possible to take a photograph like that. But having these things in concert, like kind of in a spatial, kind of a spatial narrative, is able to tell a story of what was going on. This is the intersection where photography and art meet. Stan Douglas, in all of his works, strives to capture a moment that speaks to a larger issue. The moment may be ephemeral, but the underlying issues are still in play. Talking to people, uh, interviewing people, uh, from people who were there as, as witnesses, people who were uh, police officers who were there, and who, by the way, were, were as terrified as the hippies because they, they don't do this every day. And especially the Mounted Squad who were very nervous about their, their horses interacting with people as well. Um, but it's still a, a bit of touchiness on the part of the police force. We called the uh, Mounted Squad to see if any of the officers wanted to be in the photograph um, and see if they had any historical tack we could use. They declined, but then we got a phone call from the chief um, demanding to know why we were making this image of this, this event and you know, you know, why bring this up now. Um, so clearly it's still touchy. Touchy because in so many ways the exigent issues in motion at the time of the riot are still in play today. At that point, 1971, there was a choice about what, word, what Vancouver developed in terms of the um, commercial areas, either Granville Island or, or Gastown. If you look closely, you'll see that each aspect of the image is exquisitely detailed and perfectly focused. I just wanted to make an image that could be seen in fragments and still make sense. Uh, so the fragment itself would tell a story um, and then tell a different story when you see the whole thing together. This is not a photograph. It is the culmination of painstaking attention to detail in a wide range of scenes that when assembled under the artist's hand, tell a story. The story is one about um, panic and the, uh, the claiming of space. The most dominant form in that image is the empty space of the intersection. Um, as the police are trying to, to clear the streets, uh, as the hippies are trying to run away, that emptiness, that empty space represents kind of um, an entropy or, or a state of status of equilibrium that is trying to be established, uh, even though that is contradictory to what life in a city is all about. So this um, frenetic activity is all about a struggle over who's going to, to control uh, and, and dominate space. These entitled hippies who are middle class kids primarily, who think they, have, they can do what they want, or the police who have been instructed to, um, to clear the streets. The creation of the image was a massive undertaking. Originally the plan was to shoot it on location at that intersection, but then there have been so many renovations to the area that made it to make it look historical that made it actually historically in inaccurate. So we built um, the set at the p and &E, uh, in a parking lot beside the, the racetracks. Uh, we, we poured new blacktop, uh, poured the curbs, aged it with sand blasters, built the facades of the buildings, uh, manufactured garbage like uh, newspapers, uh, Cracker Jack boxes. Essential to the storytelling aspect is the manner in which it is displayed. The double-sided image provides the viewer with the ability to see aspects of the scene from two sides. We printed um, one image on one piece of plate of glass, and an image on another piece of glass backwards, and then it's baked together with a, a translucent interlayer um, in an autoclave. Abbott and Cordova is one of many artistic pieces that Stan Douglas has produced. His fascination with the use of technology and how he can use it to replicate the world in ways that are unique to him pushes him into the realms of live performance, virtual reality, and photographic art. And the main thing is that you're actually collaborating with the reality when you make a photograph. Uh, it's not uh, from your head to your hand to the paper where you make all those kind of adjustments you make compositionally as you're, you're making a drawing, for example. Things are captured in the photograph that you can't control. And in, in a way, that's the most exciting part about it. Uh, because you don't finish making your photograph until you've looked at the photograph negative or, or, or file that you've you produced. You have an idea of what it's going to be. Um, you have intuitions about what it's going to be. Um, you frame the world in a certain way. You select a moment to capture the world. Uh, but what it's going to be, you never know until you see the, the, the final photograph.